Hello and welcome back to JimMurphyMP.com, this weekly video vlog, keeping in touch with local people uh, about local and national issues. I think, again, as is the case in many weeks, the economy has dominated um, the debate and politics and the really discussion in the country and the conversation about the budget, unemployment, balancing the books, everything else that goes besides. And we had Scottish questions in Parliament, as I mentioned. In last week's um, video blog, now at that time I knew I was going to ask the Secretary of State for Scotland questions about unemployment, but I decided not to kind of reveal that in the video blog. Um, but no point giving them advance notice of the questions. But we talked about that in Parliament this week, the fact that this Tory Liberal coalition um, has cut the future jobs fund in the future. Now this is a thing that gives young people and people who have been long term unemployed the chance to get back into work. I simply said to him that it's a, it's a policy immorality that a government stuffed full of millionaires. There are probably more millionaires in this government than any other in history. Most of them are millionaires in this cabinet. You sit there and watch the front bench of this coalition government, and there are, there are more people on the front bench than there be in a kind of an, a, average premiership football bench that are millionaires. I mean, it's, it's a peculiar um, arrangement. But I guess they're entitled to their wealth, particularly those who earned it. Um, what I find really a kind of policy immorality is that a gang of millionaires from these two parties are just cutting support for unemployed people in Scotland and across Britain. Again, it's heartless. It's selfish. But the fact is that this group of politicians have got no understanding how so many real people live, and therefore they'll go on and try to make these cuts. But the Labour Party um, will continue to stand up for people who need a voice and who need support, particularly those who have lost their jobs. And, uh, and I just hope that it's not too late for this new Tory Liberal government to change its mind. Now, away from that, of course, David Cameron was in the US for his, I think, um, certainly his first big official visit to the US since becoming Prime Minister, and he seemed to enjoy it. And him and President Obama um, enjoyed the press conference together. I think a bit of it was tainted by his comments on prime time American TV when he described Britain as the junior partner today in an alliance and the junior partner for the United States during the Second World War in 1940. Like most secondary school students know that America wasn't in the war in 1940. So the war is now kind of no partnership of any sort, whether it's junior or senior. And military historians who know more about it than I do, and certainly much more than David Cameron does, I kind of belittled his, kind of, I bluntly put, ignorance at the fact that he wasn't aware of that basic fact of history. Um, talking about junior partners. Now, junior partner of another sort, Nick Clegg, was a, as a kind of junior partner in the coalition, did Prime Minister's questions this weekend. Actually, for the f few minutes during it, he seemed to enjoy himself, but there's not one but two, but three major gaffes. So it's been a long time since a Liberal Democrat answered at Prime, Minister's, Prime Minister's questions. In fact, a Liberal, of course, rather a Liberal Democrat. A long time since a a liberal answer questions at Prime Minister's questions. And I suspect after that performance and calamity, Clegg that he's becoming known as is certainly in the House of Commons will be a long time before he's allowed to do it again. I think David Cameron will be looking at his diary in future and time when he's over for overseas visits in a way that they don't mean he's out of the country on a Wednesday. So I'm sure he can't be comfortable with Nick Clegg standing in for him. Now, much more positively and um, uh, much more significantly in the local papers this week, you may have heard of Lance Corporal David Timmins, who was granted the Queen's Award for Bravery. And I think that for all the discussion and debate about conflict through time, whether it's Iraq or Afghanistan, and everyone's entitled to their views um, of those conflicts and others, I think what we've all got to continue to remind ourselves is that phenomenal, um, brave men and women in Scotland and throughout the UK at this very moment put themselves in danger um, uh, in a remarkable way and they are Scotland at its bravest and Britain at its best and for all the kind of conversation about celebrity and heroism and the media and sport and entertainment these are the, actually some of the few genuine heroes that this country has so um, I think we should all continue to keep those folk in our thoughts and in our prayers. Um, I'll keep in touch next week. Let me know what you think. Get in touch by email. Um, follow on Twitter or on Facebook. Bye-bye.